is it? Let's let's talk because all right. You know, I think mean, if you think about like for instance, like right now our setting, like we're in a park, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like a kids park. And mm -hmm. every time you're in a park, all you hear is just laughter and innocence and no care in the world. And it's just it just changes your perspective on life. That's true, you know, it it does help me to feel like a kid when I come here. Yeah. You know, it, it does feel like that. I, I like to watch the kids how, how and what I love about kids is like even when they're at a park like my nieces when they're at a park it's just how they kind of interact with each other you know they just you know they're sometimes you see them playing separately but they're still playing together yeah. and it's it kind of like it's 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 this innocence and love that I don't think we kind of have ourselves which is kind of sad I mean we did have it we just grew out of it you know <laughs> Because even when you, I guess with when you work out, mm -hmm. you you make friends. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, but it's like I, making friends is not easy, and I think a lot of times it's like reason why a lot of people have mental health issues because they're not they don't have friendships. They don't have true friendships, and it's difficult to actually make friends and to be vulnerable. Like having someone that you can just share everything with. It, it it's 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 real. I, I've had some really, really, really unique friends now. I don't call them friends, I call them family because, you know, they're just so close. They're so close to me, you know? That, that's important. And I think when the kids come together, they have that. There's this, there, there's no barriers up. But with us, there's these barriers where, like, can I go to this person with my problems? Is that, yeah. you know, and then you feel like you're shut in and you're alone. And, yeah. and I guess that all of those things is where exercise comes. Yeah. You get to release everything that you're feeling, feeling sadness, whatever. You feel like I have the world on my shoulder. I'm depressed. You know, whatever, whatever it is that, and you need that exercise, that boost of endorphins. I, I remember a long time ago, my dad was like, "You stressed out?" I'm like, "No." I'm like, "Why are you asking me stressed out?" Like every day, just working out. <laughs> it's so crazy. You know? And I'm like, "No, it's just." This is how it work out, you know, but he was saying when he is like going through stuff, he will really, really be working out, you know. It's like, because, you know, if you're upset or even sad, you know, you, you need that anger or sadness to go somewhere. Yes, you know, yes. he always told me that you can't keep it in, you know, so you can just go take it out on your workout. <laughs> you know, instead of taking it out on something. Uh, that is so true. Like, I'll have moments where I'm just like feeling like a lot of thoughts coming and feeling overbraided just whether it's work personal ministry you know work organizational work and just feeling overburdened and I'm like you know what this is time and I used to do this a lot it's just time to just walk and just unburden on God like just walk and just take everything away and I walk and walk and walk and walk and talk and talk to him and then by the time I reach back home it's like oh, it's done Would you say mental health is increasing, or mental illness, I'm correct myself, is increasing in today's society? Of course, 100%. 100% it's increasing. Why do I think it's increasing so much? I think it, a lot of it has to do with people having more screen time than not face to face time. It's bad, you know? Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's truly, you lose your connection with yeah. yourself when you're on your socials so much, you know. I, I've experienced this, so I, I, I did. I'm not, I'm not really huge on social media because I don't post a lot because I, when I meet up with someone, I want them to ask me, how's, how's your life? Because whenever I meet up with someone, I already know everything, you know? So it's like, it just cuts the, the conversation out. Like, oh yeah, I saw that you had this and you, you went here and you had another baby and you know, I heard, realize the kids are getting growing yeah. up you know so it's like there's not a lot of um that, that that's true work, you know and um me growing up i was never a big man social even though i had my socials i was just like it, it was always my friends you know influencing me like you're so cool you should be on here with us you know because i was just always 
I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know, that's just a waste, a waste of my time. You know, I just, you know, I prefer to not do it. You know, but yeah, I think there there needs to be a balance. Yeah, there has to be a balance in everything. Yeah, exactly in yeah. everything. And it, it's if you think about it, like there's there's a di different documentaries about out there that talk about how toxic you know the social media is and. Sometimes it's, the balance can just be turning off the notifications. Like you need to know, be notified of every single thing. That's <laughs> true. Because you know what social media does to you? It's a never-ending search. It's designed like that. You're, you're, you're on there. Like, you'll be on there for 20 minutes. Don't realize you're on there for 20 minutes. And you're searching. What are you searching for? You just don't know what you're searching. You're searching. You're searching. And if, if you don't realize that, you can be on your whole your phone for a whole hour just looking and looking and looking and looking. You don't know what you're looking for. No? Oh my gosh, that is so true because like just before we started talking, we were mm -hmm. talking about the guy that got shot. Mm -hmm. And then I went on so, online to read the news report and I opened my phone and then I started looking at something that I started to find like last night. And mm -hmm. then you were like, did you find it? I was like, oh yeah, that's what I was there for. <laughs> it's it, like it, this web. <laughs> it it, it, it truly is. Tunnel it, web it, that just keeps sucking you in. It truly, it truly is like that, you know. And for, for me, what I have done, you know, a lot of people may say my mind is so sharp. I'm very disciplined. And I've had to discipline very myself. Disciplined. Very disciplined. You know, because, you know, I'm like, you know, I I like to use the 20 minutes or even the 30 minutes waste of time on, on social media. Like, I could have been working out in that 30 minutes. I could have been doing something other than. But for my socials, as it's progressing, you know, it, it's more so of I'm now an influencer for my vegan page. You know, have a small business going. So it's like my presence is, is needed there. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So I need to be on there to, to see what's going on. But I still keep that discipline and the balance to yeah, not, yeah. you know, get sucked in in yeah. there you know I, I had wondered about that with you and I think I talked with you about that like mm -hmm. how do you use your platform because you are influential and you're involved in life how do you disconnect from it and I, I think you told me that mm -hmm. like you just have to keep focused yeah, on yeah. who you are and what I, you're doing. I'm not afraid to disconnect you know because you know with this vegan page I have you know I didn't even want to make it it was my girlfriend that influenced me to, to make, you know, she's like, your stuff is just so cool, you know, <laughs> so why why not make the page, you know? And I remember the night we, we, we stayed up and we uh, made the, the pages, you know, <laughs> it's my best page yet, oh, you know? Nice. Yeah, the food are always so But it's a, the social media, it's just, it's like, you, you, I can't, I don't know how to explain it. like, you need to be up to date with it, you know? Is it, I just want to just be natural. I just don't want to be on there sometimes, you know. And I've been thinking in the future I will have a social media expert or manager. Just to, just to handle it for me. I'll I'll give you the content. You just do yeah, do that yeah. stuff, you know. <laughs> you know, because I enjoy making content. I love making. It's just a natural thing for me, you know. But being on there, you know. But social media it has its, its positive, like like friends that you know you don't live with. Out of state, yeah. you know, different countries, you know, and stuff like that. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Because you know, I have people in different Africa and Australia that I connect with that, without social media, without mm -hmm. technology we have today, would not be. Yeah. So, I guess for me, it's just I think obviously we're older, more mature, mm -hmm. so it's easier for us to recognize that. Yeah, we have to have a time limit, yeah. and we need to do this, but these things. Like for me, I, I always ask my patients. I work with kids with cancer, so I always ask them, "How many time hours did you spend today on TikTok?" And they'll go to their screen time as like four hours. So that's four hours of scrolling like this, you know. So in a sense, you're thinking about our next generation. Like, how is that affecting them intellectually? I I, I think it's making them smarter than we are because they're being flooded with information. I feel like. They, they will be fine, but they, they're going to lose their natural self. Because you then know. you're being constantly molded into something yeah. you're not. Oh, that's a you really know. good point. Because if you think about it, if you watch someone enough, you become that person. Yeah, that's true. That's so, if you watch true. Them, so who are you? Are you you? Mm -hmm. who do you and that, that age, your mind is so impressionable. Mm -hmm. easily, easily moldable. Like, who are you really? 
you know fam I said this to you a couple months ago when we were when we had that conversation in the subway and I, I don't know if you remember but I said I isolated myself for a few months to find out who I'm like. yeah, you know what I'm saying because it's like if you don't know who you are it can be a problem you know? and like how how I find out who I am is just by taking all the outside noise out and just listening to who I am truly you know so that's where that's where the social media is like it, it goes back and forth like I don't want to be on there I want to be on there because I know like the influence it can have you know what I'm saying and you know for you to be who you are your, your mind gotta be in your yeah. own head you know our, our identity isn't in no. like even kind of like if we think about our world right now where this there's this black gets his way and all of that stuff so our identity is not in the fact that we're african-american or we're, we're darker skin our identity in who our creator says we are yeah you know and a lot of times that even that get lost in the translation because i remember during the covid time and everything was happening and i stayed away a lot from the whole george floyd and all that stuff because i did not want to start for someone to give me a viewpoint of another race and it's so easy too because i remember like when when i came back home so when i came back home during covid i was i was in australia and i came back home and then my nieces came down to visit me and, and my niece was I guess they were so locked up in the house and they were constantly on watching the news. Yes. <laughs> so, to them, COVID was caused by a, um, the Asians, the Chinese people, right? Yeah. Because that's all they heard in the news, China and COVID. So when they came to visit me, I, I brought them to the store and they said, Auntie, look, this, this lady is from China. And I was like, no, she's Asian and she's probably American. <laughs> You know, trying to like let them know that what you're seeing is not reality. This lady lives here. She yeah, works here. Yeah. She has her business. <laughs> you know, this is her business. So, and it's it's also important for us as adults to kind of change the narrative, the narrative that they're seeing, and yeah. inflict in that narrative truth. Right? Yeah, that that's, that's so important. You know, a lot a lot of kids grow up with certain mentalities, bad mentalities. You know, like thinking this is the norm. You know what I'm saying? And you know, if you can break that at a young age, then it, it will really be good. You know, like sometimes you hear some some kids say some stuff. I won't say what they say, but you hear some kids say some stuff at a young age, and be like, if you don't stop them now, it's gonna be bad when they, because it's gonna be molded into their head. You know, it's like they're just kids. They know what they don't know. They don't know what they're saying. You know, but you gotta you gotta teach them. You gotta mm -hmm. teach them. And I, that's why I realized like a lot of things is a lot of hatred and stuff like that is really learned. It's a learned behavior. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not born like that. You learn. A lot of things that I find myself teaching my nieces when they say something based on what they see, you know, it's especially going back during that time when the whole police thing happened and we were walking one evening and they were like, "Oh, auntie, a police? Yeah. Are they gonna are they gonna shoot us?" You know, yeah. I was yeah. like. That kind of broke my heart, and I was like, no, no, he's a, he's a, look at him, he's a nice guy, he's smiling at you, you know? Yeah. Just trying to like change, take that out of their minds to let them know that. I, 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 I've seen that in movies where kids are scared of the cops, just because they thought they're being targeted, you know. Me, me growing up necessarily in Jamaica, never experienced that, you know, I've never been afraid of the police. Stuff you know, <laughs> you know, but uh, no. you know. I think mental health right now is we see a lot of suicides. How can? How do you think that? Because it's such a big deal, mental health. Suicide rates are increasing. I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe people are always killing themselves. I don't know. I would have to look at the statistics to see how much there's an increase. But we're actually learning more about it, right? Because of social media, we're learning more about it. Do you, I, I, do you think that there's an increase in your mind? You know, I don't know too much about suicide and why people do it, to, to be honest, you know. A family member of mine um, committed suicide um, a couple months ago, you know. And, um, really? I, 
I don't know too much about it, you know. We spoke to him like a few times, you know, growing up in my life. But it's like, I just can't comprehend why someone would do it, you know. But at the same time, I don't have the mindset they have, you know. I, I guess that they just get to a point where it's just, they break, it's just too much, you know. The best thing they can do is just to, you know, do that. But No, that's never the best thing. That's what you think in the moment, but mm -hmm. it's never, there's just, you know, if somebody, if somebody is saying, contemplating that, like, whatever negative thoughts you're thinking about yourself, I'm not worthy, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not sexy enough, my, yeah. my booty's not big enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. Whatever it is that's causing you to feel like, I am not worthy, yeah. think about all the things you have. Start thinking about what you have. Have a heart of gratitude. Start naming the things or writing down the things that you have. I have food in the fridge. Yeah, yeah. Some people don't. Yeah. I have a house to live in. Mm. Some people don't. I can go outside and I'm not being targeted. Yeah. Some people don't. You know, there's so many good things. Like when you start thinking yeah. about what yeah. you have, mm -hmm. you realize you're you will feel you feel a lot better. A merry yeah. heart is like a good medicine. That's Whereas true. when you start thinking about what you don't have, it's like it's like this darkness that keeps telling you like da, 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 da. Yeah, and in yeah. actuality when you say, Oh, I actually have this. I might not have that, but I have this. You know, and it kinda helps. Suicide is it's it's really sad. Would you say suicide and depression are linked or, or, or they are the same? Um, they're linked because when someone is depressed, that's the depression comes and then the suicide happens. Because yeah. depression there's different levels of depression. There's a severe depression where you can't get out of bed, you're worthless, you're, you know, there's I, no way to live. Jer Jerby said this um, when I went to the church. She said, um, she was basically saying how depression and social media have a connection. You know, because you, you feel like everyone is so better than you, you know. And for me, I have never, ever, ever had that experience. Not surprised. You know, and I don't know why someone would have that mindset, you know, why would you feel like this person is doing better than you? you know, like it, it doesn't matter, you know, if this person even if that person is doing better than you, you know, you're doing better in your area of your life, you know what I'm saying? You know, we can't we all can't have the same success. And it's you know? a lie. That person might not be doing better than you. It's mm -hmm. a lie. It really is a lie. Because I remember I lived in California and then my sister came and lived with me. Mm -hmm. And I used to work at night, so obviously like in the daytime I'm sleeping. My sister would get up mm -hmm. She would get dressed and take pictures mm -hmm. and put on social media and she was not going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> so you were thinking like she's yeah. living this fantastic life. Yeah, yeah. Homegirl is staying in the house, you yeah. know. So it's like this, it's this false reality that a lot of people buy into. And just realizing that that picture that yeah. is perfect, yeah, yeah. she took like a thousand of those. I, I am aware of social media the in, that, in that aspect. And, um, I think everyone should understand that, <laughs> you know, you know, people are always going to put their best on social media and I have no problem with that, you know, it's like, you know, I, would I be comfy posting my failures, you know, like I lost my job last week, you know, I have to, I lost my house, now I wouldn't be comfy because I feel like I would be generating sadness and negative energy my presence would be like that you know but i just think people just should be aware that you know people are always going to put their best foot forward on social media and i like that is that is so true because um and that's one of the reasons why i don't post a lot on my social media because i never want somebody to because of my life to be like oh man i want to live her life and then mm. decide to like <laughs> kill himself you know to, 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 to be honest, I, I always say, you may see me and want to be like me, you can have it, because it's hard, <laughs> you know, it is hard, a lot of people don't realize that too, like, you see success, but you, you don't know how much goes into it, you know, um, there's there's a fellow um, cast next athlete, Rip Wright, you know, shout out to Rip Wright, he said, a lot of people see the glory, but they don't see the story. Or the pain behind you know, it and, and life is like that. You know, you always be at the top, but you don't know what they did to get, to get there. You know, especially in my cast next like, year. You know, you see the, the cool videos, but you have no idea how many repetitions, how many <laughs> strong pains and aches, and you know, just have, having to do that to get to that spot. You know, but 
That is so true. Hey, I went on social media this morning and I saw this girl, like I'm into roller skating, she's into roller skating and mm. she put she put on the social media and she said that I am a suicide attempt sur survivor. Attempt survivor. Mm. And she said that I have depression and stuff like that. Something you know, what I did, I messaged her and I sent her yeah. a message and I said, yeah. This is my number if you ever have one. Obviously, she might never message me, but yeah. it's there in her inbox if she ever feels like I'm here. That's you good. Somebody to talk to. That's good. Mm -hmm. We can talk together. We can get to know each other. We can be friends. Like mm -hmm. the social media can connect us. Yeah, that's true. You know, I have had my moments when I do feel sad, maybe slightly depressed. Oh. I tell myself I can't live like that. Mm -hmm. That's that's my discipline kicking that I cannot live like that because it's gonna lead to just me being stuck. You know, so I just, I'll, I'll just start fresh. You know, if I, if, if Sunday I'm not in the best mood, I said tomorrow I'm going to get up, I'm just going to change everything. I'm just going to do it different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. it's got to change your mindset, you know? Yeah. I mean, that is hard too. That's a, that's another topic, your mind, you know, like you have to train it just as you train your muscles, you know? That's powerful. Training your mind. Like it's, training your muscles. It's, 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 it's a fact, you know, I remember when I was setting up my workout program um, seven months ago for myself, my mind, that had to be the driving force for everything. That had to be, I had to make sure I sleep at this time, I eat at this time, um, I train at this time, you know, and sometimes you may not want, you may not want to do it, but that's the, the discipline and your sharpness of your mind is forcing you. Yeah. To do it, cause your mind will get lazy. It will get lazy, and it would make you feel lazy. It will just yeah. That is so true, cause I remember like one of my favorite author. He would, she would say, guard every avenue of your mind, mm -hmm. meaning that whatever is coming in mm -hmm. that would probably pollute your mind, pollute your thoughts. Yeah, guard yeah. those things. Make sure they don't come in. Yeah. You know, and one of the things like I've been through, like um, I have um, had um, depression where where I felt kind of like um, low and like, you know, I, you know, I should just probably have these thoughts about going underwater and just like, just not getting back up, right? So um, I've had those thoughts and then now, it, now when I look back, I was like, that was like the enemy trying to take me out, you yeah, know? Yeah. Because he makes you feel like you, you're not gonna account to anything. Just yeah. end it now, yeah. just go to sleep, it will all end, but then you're like, no. I'm bigger than that, you know. God, love for me is bigger than all of that, and and it's and it's really powerful because looking back, like people are, you know, going through those things. I've gone through that, you know. I guess you could say like I'm a survivor. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that's good. You know, that, that, now those thoughts don't even like bother me because I realize like what I have accomplished, and this listen, what I have accomplished at, since that time to now, if I had taken my life at that time or gone underwater, going the ocean, yeah, you know, yeah. and just fell asleep or whatever, at that time, I wouldn't have been able to become a um, missionary to Africa, serving people in the mountains of Palawan and in the Philippines, you yeah, know, yeah. living in Australia, like, just kind of like things that starting an organization yeah, to you know, help others, you know, so it's like, like, can you imagine, like, if you're thinking about this, like, mm -hmm. You have an amazing future ahead of you. This is not your present is not your future. What I've learned in life, you can't be afraid of the struggle. And, and it really, really helps to mold you, you know. And I have learned that from working out. <laughs> you can't be afraid of when it gets hard, you know, like cause when you when you do survive it, you, you you've learned now. You've had those experiences. You can go you can go about your life with that experience and you know so I, I don't get I don't get a of it you know yeah yeah that, that's I, I accept that, it. yeah Daddy. now you can because right now I can say I've been there I've thought about it and my life is so much better like right now I would never even think about that I could imagine not being there right now mm. you know so that, that is One of the things I enjoy coming out here to, to work out is on um, the kids. They're so fascinated when they when they see me doing my stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
they just, they just can't believe what's happening, you know, but it's a good thing for them to see people working out. So, so they can... Do, you're, yeah. you're really leaving a legacy. <laughs> yeah, you're leaving a legacy. You know, because I am not an indoor person. I, I wasn't I wasn't like that. I wasn't, I'm not designed like yeah, that. Definitely, yeah. You know, I just can't can't do that. You know, and I see a lot, lot, a lot of kids these days. They tend to just want to stay indoors. Yeah. You know. You know. Just yeah. We we have as adults as parents, we have to really help them mm -hmm. because the you know we we model what they they want. They yeah. they are. Or they become. That's true. If we are outdoor, they become outdoor. If they are seeing us. You know, let's talk about kind of like even parenting and mm -hmm. we're, we're both of us are parents. But yeah. if you think about a lot of things nowadays is done separate. Like you have your child in front of the TV, you're on your phone, that's separate. Versus, you know, watching together, you know, coming together and watching like yeah. the TV and you can have dialogue. You know, I was telling my girlfriend a couple of days ago, growing up, I don't remember ever really having family dinners. You know, it may sound crazy, but I don't remember ever having any, any family dinners with my, with my people, you know. And, um, I was in boarding school for a few years, so I isolated from my family again. You know, but I feel like parenting is so much of a hard job. I've always said it to people. I feel like it's the hardest job ever. It is. Because you're, you're trying to get the best from your child. And sometimes you can't even force them to do that, you know. <laughs> just got to let them do their thing, you know. But it, 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 really, it really is a, a hard job, you know. Because you, you need to be that role model for them. Because as you said, they're watching, you know what I'm saying. If you do that, they'll feel like it's okay for them to do that, you know what I'm saying. For example, if you own, if you own, say, a Home Depot, you know, your child will grow up to and feel like they can do that too. If you grew up and didn't have big a confidence, they're going to feel like, well, my mom and dad, they didn't do that and achieve that, you know. I mean, so, it's not that for everyone. Yeah. You know, everyone's ambitions are different, but. And if you think about kind of like, was it Maslow? Um, oh, sorry, was it Maslow? Oh, man, I can't remember his name right now. There's this healthy balance and healthy relationship that is you nurture throughout your life. But you feel like your parents aren't really there, you can't really trust them, then you have this mistrust towards people and it just damages your whole life. I feel like if you can't trust your own family, you're not gonna trust them. You know. It's so important to have that togetherness. You see me overall, I am just a lover. You know? My heart is just like that, you know. I want to when I'm around people, I want them to to know that I am given love. Her energy must be love, you know. But it, it feels good, you know. Like love is way better than hate, you know. True. You know, so I I, I try to to spread a lot of love, you know. The world in general needs more mm -hmm. love. We, I, we need more love. Way. I think so. Just how men's heart has gotten so cold and hatred has increased. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of love, like there's more love then most of the problems that we're having right now wouldn't be you know yeah, how about we just all choose to love i think so <laughs> more love yeah i would you know being patient with people being kind with people mm -hmm. it not being envious you know and i think that's the problem too if you think about social media why there's a problem there's this envy like i want what they have just be happy with people no people are like that i i i have, <laughs> i've experienced that you know like I don't know if it's a human thing, but a person's life could be going so good and they see you with one thing and they need to have that. <laughs> so I, I, I've, definitely, I've definitely seen that, you know, and I, I don't know why. You know, I guess they feel like your life is just way more better than they need this to make their life this is better too, you know, but for me, I, I'm, I am content, but I'm also very ambitious, you know. Guys, you know, we just branched off on a um, variety of topics. You know, hopefully, you know, you can, you know, find some gems in there somewhere. You know, it can help your life. But 
this is my good friend Talise, you know, she does cast things with me here and there. And um just having a conversation. She also has the Marfani group, right? Yeah. Would you mind explaining what Marfani is? Okay, so Marfani is an organization where we're trying to um, build a school and a clinic in Guinea, West Africa. So we have land there and we're just waiting for the funds so we can start building. Alright, so Marfani is their group. They have merch, they have a whole bunch of cool stuff. They're very loving spiritual people if you're interested in people like that i'll leave her link in the description oh, that's so guys don't forget to drop a like drop a comment you know chat let me know what you talk say in the comments you know get back to you you know don't forget to subscribe don't forget to um follow me over my instagram on guap non guap non vegan until next time i'll catch you in the next video